Hello, YouTubers, nomads, and fellow hams. I guess I need to say that now. As you can tell from the opening, I've pulled the trigger. Big changes. <laughs> the house is sold. Um, I have about a month to empty it out and be out and uh, move into the new home that will be mobile. And we'll be hitting the road and taking the show on the road, literally. Now, I haven't arrived at this decision lightly or easily. Um, it's been several months of consideration and planning, and you know, I've mentioned it from time to time that uh, things are temporary here, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to keep the house. Well, I, I, I could barely keep it, but I couldn't upkeep it, you know what I mean? Um, it was just not going to be manageable for, you know, the things I needed to do to it. I made a big push, unsuccessfully, over the last month to try to find employment and was again unsuccessful and so I decided before I got too low um, on funds I'd go ahead and pull the trigger and it would just be a little bit more in the bank when when I hit the road uh, so I started looking for a buyer for the house and an RV for the trip um, the buyer was easy to find uh, it's a good market and the neighborhood's a pretty popular neighborhood so that was easy the RV though not so much um, I looked at many that were advertised locally uh, Craigslist and uh, uh, other local resources and I saw a lot of pieces of junk uh, I saw RVs that had crunchy roofs and lots of water damage and uh, one that was okay but didn't have a generator and so on and so forth uh, I thought about a camper van um, if I wasn't gonna be doing you know or trying to do an electronic workshop on the road and, and uh, you know decent ham radio and all that I probably would have gone with a camper van or if it was just me and I wasn't doing the YouTube thing I've lived in a van before when I was young, uh, when I was 23, I drove around the country for about a month living in a van, um, but I was too young to appreciate it, and it just, you know, I just went too quick. But I thought about a van, and if it was just me, I probably would have gone that route. You know, easier to park, much better gas mileage, um, way easier to park uh, and drive. Uh, you could park a camper van in residential areas if you're stealthy and nobody would notice you. Uh, but a big RV, well, you know, it's a little different. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, considering that I was going to be doing the radio and electronics work on the road, you know, and I wanted to have enough of a, a setup to be able to do repairs perhaps even, um, I went with a, uh, with a Class C RV. Uh, on my way back from looking at one RV, um, I, I looked at, like I said, many and uh, one looked good it was kind of big it was 34 feet or something like that huge um, and I was going back for a second look at it and we discovered that a chipmunk had chewed its way through one of the nightstands in the bedroom through the floor and through the wiring harness below so <laughs> that was out uh, but it's probably good because on the way back um, I was looking around as I was driving you know and I went past a small car lot that had several class C RVs parked around it so I turned around and went back and talked to them and they were rentals and they did have a couple of them for sale and I went and looked at them and I settled on one a 2002 Four Winds Chateau 31Z it's 31 feet long it's a big beast um, it's built on a Ford chassis uh, I think a Triton V10 engine you know so plenty of torque there um, it needs a few things it needs a little work it was a rental um, it's got 105,000 miles on it uh, so, you know, I'm going to have to p uh, patch a few little small leaks uh, around the edge of the roof and the awning. And then I'm going to seal the entire edge on both sides of the roof um, to prevent any further leaks. And there's not much damage inside, a little bit of bubbling on the wallpaper on one side. I think it'll hold up fine for a year or more on the road once it's all sealed. So I've got to do that. Um, a few other little things here and there, tweaks and, and so on. I'm going to put uh, 200 watts of solar on the roof and three batteries in there, so I'll have plenty of juice. Um, what else am I going to do? Well, I'll show you when I when I show you the tour of it. We'll take a look at it here in a minute. But uh, but yeah, yesterday was a big day, huge day. I went up and uh, signed all the papers and did everything we had to do to take possession of it. Walked around it with the guy who showed me how everything worked, and uh, I got in and I drove it away. It's the biggest thing I've ever driven. And getting all the way back here uh, to the 
home QTH uh, with the tiny little driveway, I actually managed to back that massive beast up into my driveway. <laughs> so it's here. I am very busy emptying out the house, selling things, and uh, working on the RV. And I have one month to complete both of those tasks. So there's not going to be any project or electronic videos, uh, maybe not even a hangout, although I might try to get one in there over this next month because I'm going to just be so busy uh, working on this thing and getting moved into it. Um, once I hit the road, though, uh, there will be a pretty good flow of videos as I video log the journey and the projects and the radio things that I do along the way. Uh, and I've got some, uh, some ideas and lots of plans. So let's go take a look at it. Sorry, I've talked too much. Let's uh, let's go take a look at the uh, at the RV, and uh, I'll give you a tour and show you what I'm planning. Well, there it is. I got it in beside the house, and I've started working on it. Home sweet Rome, or should I say Rome sweet home? Hey, that might be something to paint on the back. Of it. It's a beast. It's uh, 31 feet long. Lots of storage and lots of room. It's got the usual amenities, including a uh, four kilowatt generator, great big flat backside. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the antenna on there somehow. I got some little things to get done, you know, just from the age. I'm gonna get these uh, rubber inserts replaced on the windows. But uh, mechanically, I'm gonna get the brakes done. It's been sitting for a year at the uh, dealership where it was. Um, I need to replace that ladder. The bottom edge is broke. It was a rental, so it got beat on a little bit. But, you know, with my budget, I really couldn't afford much, and I think I got a decent deal. 105,000 miles on it, so she's broke in. Let's have a look inside, and I'll talk about uh, my plans for what I'm gonna do in here. Got to replace the screen door. The latch is broke there. <laughs> Little stuff. Ugh. So, roomy. Roomy, roomy, roomy. Of course, we got a little kitchenette there. Three burner cooktop and an oven. Two sinks. All the mechanical systems work just fine. Um, propane and water systems all work. Generator works great. There's the microwave up there. Little microwave. And of course, the obligatory Norcold uh, refrigerator. Not a Dometic, it's a Norcold. That's okay. We've got the latches. So I'll be cleaning that out. Um, the bathroom is a nice little bath. We got a mirror there and a sink, and of course, the toilet. A shower. Like a big shower. <laughs> Bigger than I would have expected. But, uh, more storage space when I'm moving, I guess. Gonna replace the old uh, goofy little fan. Doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> Gonna replace that with a fantastic fan I've already got ordered. Uh, over here we've got, hello, there I am. A nice uh, closet space and dresser space and the bedroom. That mattress is going. <laughs> In fact, I'm thinking about redoing it. The uh, bed under here, you can see there's a spot there where the hinges are. This is storage down here. That's actually the water tank under there. So what I'm thinking about doing is removing those little nightstands and then uh, putting a twin size mattress the long way back at the back for the bed. And that's where I'll sleep. And that'll free up half of the bedroom over here and over here. And what I'll probably do is maybe on this uh, corner over here I'll uh, build in a little corner desk and that'll be my editing desk where I'll put my computer for editing. Um, so we got some storage here and there. If I take those little night tables out, I'll leave these cabinets and there's enough space there for the mattress to sit in for me to sleep and and not have to worry about it. I think that'll work. So that's the plan for in here. Um, we go back out here to the living space. And it's got a nice couch there, a little chair and a dinette. But the dinette's going. I already looked underneath these. There's nothing there but storage. No equipment under there. The uh, furnace is over here under the sink and the water heater's under the stove. Um, so the utilities are over there. This is just just seating. 
So I'm going to rip out this table and these, these bench seats, and this is where I'm going to build my radio and electronics desk. I'm going to use this space um, and build it in. It's going to be, uh, it's going to come out about so far, deep enough for the radios, <coughs> and there's going to be cubbies in there for the radios and, and equipment, and then a fold down flap that'll fold up to lock to secure the radios and equipment and fold down to become the uh, the desk or bench for operating the radios or working on electronics. So that's the plan for here. As far as a table to eat on, um, I'm looking at this couch and I'm thinking about what I want to do here. I don't know if I want to keep the couch. Uh, I might, or I might maybe put one of these dinette benches over here to free up a little space and uh, put a little table there and uh, have a little table there for me to sit with my laptop um, or use a fold-out table, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of the best ways to use the space. Up here over the cab over, they have built-in cabinets and a slide-out uh, extra bunk. And uh, I don't need the bunk, but I want the storage space up here. I don't need the TV. That's going. Uh, the only problem is that this side here, this panel here, has uh, electrical and a wiring harness in there. So I can't mess with this side. But I think I'm going to cut it off here and here and open this all up as deep storage. Um, in fact, I think there's enough room there that what I'm thinking about doing is tucking my uh, my mag loop, my three-foot mag loop up in there for storage up against the front of the cab over and then actually try to use it in that position um, as a stealth antenna. Uh, it's either that or if I have enough money left over I might replace the goofy TV antenna on the roof with a, a screwdriver because uh, this crank over here, which I need to glue this back up, this raises it up. So I might use that bracket that's up there already and put a screwdriver antenna on it so I could have it down when I'm traveling and then just crank it up right in here, right, to raise it up and uh, deploy it for use. So that might be a possibility. You know, there's there's all kinds of possibilities. And we got lots of storage. Um, We've got storage, you know, up above. Uh, this up here, I'm going to use mostly for, like, parts and tools um, and maybe some clothes. And then the living space storage I'll use for food and dry goods and miscellaneous stuff. Uh, underneath the uh, radio desk that's going in over here, there'll be additional storage there. And, you know, I'm going to try to use as much of the space as I can. So, Yeah. This is it. This is going to be the mobile radio and electronics shop and future home of KB9RLW. So that's going to be home in another month. That's where I'll be. Uh, well, where I'll be, I don't know where I'll be. <laughs> I've got some loose plans. Um, I would like to make it to Quartz Fest in January out there in Arizona. I guess that's my short term first goal. Uh, but in the interim, I'm gonna gonna make my way south, chase the uh, chase the 70 degree temperatures. And uh, thanks very much uh, to Al, one of my viewers. I have a spot uh, at an RV park in Corpus Christi where I can winter uh, for December through January up until I take off for Quartz Fest. So um, I'm probably gonna hit a couple of national forests on the way and uh, do a, a four or five day camps just to shake out the RV learn all the systems, figure out what I need to do yet so that when I get to Corpus Christi I can spend that time plugged in um, to finish out uh, the RV and take care of whatever I have to take care of on it. Uh, right now I do need to take it down and get the brakes done and uh, uh, I'm gonna get the cooling system flushed, transmission fluid flushed and changed, the differential fluid changed, you know the basic mechanical stuff so I know it's at least ready to hit the road and I'm going to have AAA, for those of you that are, are going to recommend that. I'm going to have AAA. I've got uh, full coverage insurance with roadside assistance through my insurance company. And RVs are really cheap to insure. I told them I was going to use it year-round, um, and it's $40 a month. Go figure. You know, that's fine with me. Uh, that might change. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I was expecting a lot more. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. That's why there's been a lack of, uh, of project videos here lately. I've been very busy. And I'm going to continue to be very busy this month. But I will give you guys updates. Um, 
I'm going to try to at least do one video a week while I'm getting the, the RV prepped and show you the progress as we get it set up and get moved into it and what I'm going to do for the radios and the antennas. I've got all that planned out up here too. The backyard vertical is coming along. Um, it's, going to take, it's going to make the journey with me as a quick deploy antenna. I've got a plan for that and we'll, we'll talk about that in a future, uh, a future video. So stay tuned. Follow along. This is going to be an interesting journey and uh, um, I hope at least uh, a very interesting journey because I'm going to be providing you with, uh, with video along the way of what I'm doing and, and what I'm seeing and we're going to do some radio stuff maybe do a live stream from a Walmart parking lot I've got a plan for that we'll see <laughs> uh, who knows maybe ultimately next year sometime I make my way out east to a W1AW and we do a live HF hangout from W1AW you know or something like that so We'll keep it going. Um, if you have, think of any interesting places uh, as I get rolling, and, and, and you, know, you know which region of the country I'm in, um, you know you'll be able to, to give me hints and, and ideas, uh, and I'll uh, read all the comments. Oh yeah, um, updates and stuff when I'm on the road. Now uh, I can't afford as yet to have uh, like a Verizon business account with a hotspot and have cellular data everywhere. Um, that would be nice maybe down the road if the channel grows with this venture we'll do that but for now what I'm gonna have to do uh, as some of you may not know this and most of you probably do Walmart allows RVers and travelers to park in their parking lots overnight and uh, I'll be doing that as I go you know I'll be like Walmart Walmart National Forest for a week Walmart Walmart uh, BLM land for a, a week you know and when I park in the Walmart overnight, I'm going to use their Wi-Fi to check on the social media, the Facebook page, upload videos, um, set up the release dates on the videos, and cross my fingers and hope YouTube doesn't demonetize them. That would suck to find out a week later that the video I put up a week ago has 2,000 views that I didn't get paid for. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So once I hit the road, updates will be in intermittent bursts you know as I hit free Wi-Fi um, and hopefully we'll get a schedule going and get some kind of order to that some kind of regular release going on and that might change if the channel starts growing um, and I can invest in uh, other services like a cellular hotspot um, and unlimited data then I could do things more quickly you know so it'll change in the future uh, I also have some ideas for some other photography stuff uh, the videos are still going to be primarily ham radio and electronics. Um, there is, of course, going to be interspersed in there um, van life, nomad life type R um, RV videos. And I'm also going to take back up binaural recording. Um, I did a video a while back where I use microphones that are in my ears. And the recorded image is, is three-dimensional. You put on headphones and you can hear right, left, front, and back, up and down you're there. If you put on headphones and close your eyes, you, you feel like you're actually there. And since I'm going to be traveling to interesting places, I'm sure that some of them will sound interesting as well, too. So I'll be doing some uh, binaural recording along the way. So sorry for chatting that just so long. I just really wanted to fill everybody in with what's going on. And uh, I hope you'll all uh, ride along with me on this uh, this change of life journey. You know, it's 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 a big deal for me, for sure. Um, but I hope that it'll, uh, it'll continue to be interesting and entertaining here on the channel. So 73 for now, and we'll give you another update in about a week or so. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.